Hi again, everyone. So, uh, as he said, I'm Huda Vuamor, and I'm today um, presenting a work that we did with colleagues in Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Carnegie Mellon University in Qatar, and NYU Abu Dhabi. The work is about domain and dialect ad adaptation for machine translation into Egyptian Arabic. So, what we are translating here is English into Egyptian. So. Before I give you any detail about this work, let me tell you that this is a master's project, a master thesis of Western and Serena. So they mainly did all the work and we kind of supervised them and helped them through uh, the, uh, the work. So um, why are we interested in Egyptian Arabic, in Egyptian in MT? Because as everybody know here now, Egyptian is the most widely understood dialect of uh, Arabic, and we want to build a machine translation that translates into Egyptian, because what is done till now is that everybody's trying to translate from a dialect into, uh, into uh, English or from MSA into English. So she said, let's try to translate into the dialect and see how our system will be. So the problem is that to build any MT system, we need data. Data should be parallel, for example, in our case, English into Egyptian um, corpus. This parallel data, although all the attention that everybody has now into dialects and creating resources and creating corpora, we still, lack, we still have a lack of corpora. We don't have the right corpora to get the perfect machine translation system. Something else, uh, the most of the data are available are, are on the web and they don't have standard orthography and all of the problems we have been discussing since the morning. So one can say, oh, Egyptian dialect and MSA are close. It's Arabic after all. Why don't you use a machine translation system that does English into MSA, apply it to Egyptian and get results? I will tell you that no, because we cannot do that because Egyptian is different from MSA. As you know, morphologically, lexically, if you talk about domain, MSA is the formal language. Texts written in MSA are very formal. Texts written in Egyptian are informal. So what is the problem? What is, what is the solution then? We thought of using MSA as a pivot language here to translate from English into Egyptian, but with the, with not, not, not using it in a direct way, but think of a way to adapt it, adapt MSA, in MSA that, to make it clo as closer as possible to our Egyptian text. So that's why we called our, our work a domain and a dialect adaptation system. So we built a translation, machine translation system for English uh, to Egyptian uh, language using MSA as a pivot. Uh, we apply different, two different techniques to adapt uh, the domain and the dialect into, from out domain data set into in domain data set. For this, we build, we generate automatically an Egyptian side of 100K, that's going to be the name of the corpus, we couldn't find a better name. So 100K corpus, triparallel corpus covering MSA, English and Egyptian, and we use different techniques to do the adaptation, as, you, as I said. I'm going to give you, um, this is the outline of my talk, I'm going to describe the system, how we build it, how we build the baseline, and how we build the different adaptation systems. Then I'll tell you how we evaluated it, and uh, what are the results we got, and, uh, sorry, a conclusion, not a conclusion. So, here is our system. So it is mainly a phrase-based uh, machine translation. So it is mainly based on phrase-based machine translation system. You can see that we have a baseline system that translates the English sentences into Egyptian Arabic by using our corpus, our in-domain corpus right away, and that's going to be our baseline. And then we have two different, we designed two different approaches to do the dialect identification and the domain identification. The first one is a one-step adaptation system in which we uh, we build a core system to translate English into MSA, and then we built another corpus, uh, another system to, the, to build, uh, to adapt in the same time the domain and the dialect and translate it into Egyptian. But for the third one, for the, for the second approach, we separate the domain adaptation and the dialect adaptation and check what are the results. I'm going to give you the details right now. Well, as you can say, see here, what we needed first is to build a machine translation system that translates English into MSA. For this, we built a classic Moses-based system that uses what we call here the out-of-domain data, which is um, the 5 million sentences extracted from the NIST data. 
We tuned it, tested it, built language model using SRLM on the Giga, or the Arabic Giga world, and we used MADA to do the tokenization with the ITV, ATB tokenization scheme. So this is our core system, translates English into MSA that we're gonna use later to translate into Egyptian. Uh, for the adaptation systems, we needed what we call here our in-domain data. Our in-domain data, I can, okay, I can say here it is an in-house triparal English MSA Egyptian Arabic corpus, but it's not really in-house because the MSA and the English um, sides of this corpus are extracted from the NIST corpus, but we just generate automatically the Egyptian side of the corpus by using a system developed by Madu Mohammed, which he realized it is a rule-based system that translates MSA into Egyptian using 103 transformation rules that covers different nouns, proverbs, and even certain uh, lexical items. Uh, that's the, that the this, this is our 100K corpus. You're gonna see it a lot in the, in my schemes, in the in the, uh, the diagrams. So as I told you, the first adaptation system just uses MSA as a pivot using different data. The core system translates English into MSA, and then we use the 100K sentences to translate into Egyptian. Here, putting together the other the domain and the dialect adaptation in the same box, and let's see what it's gonna give. I give you the results later, which works quite well compared to the baseline. The second one is a two-step adaptation system. We first adapt the MSA. We do like we do the translation, and then we first adapt the MSA in uh, the out-of-domain MSA into the in-domain MSA, which means that we adapt what we got using the five million sentences to something similar or closer to what we have in the 100K sentences, our our uh, genuinely uh, generated uh, corpus, and then we move into. The dialect adaptation, here all the systems are MT-based system and we're kind of casting all the problems to MT, to kind of a monolingual MT. So we call MSA into Egyptian an adaptation more than a translation system. Uh, these are the systems. So for this, we use a Moses phrase based statistical machine translation models. We use SRILM and KNL to build the language models. And we use uh, the classic word alignments and symmetrization heuristics. And here I, for the evaluation, sorry, I, I think it's duplicated here. I copy pasted things. I'm sorry. For the evaluation, we use the classic. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> For the evaluation, we I we use the classic metrics uh, blue to evaluate our system, and here are our results. So we extracted a, a test set from the 100K triparallel corpus composed, composed of 1K sentences, 1,000 sentences, and compared to the different conf configuration. The, the most important result here is that our system, the two-step adaptation system, beats the baseline and all the other systems, and we can see that we have an improvement of more than 20 points of blue on the tokenized and the detokenized size. So here we are just comparing um, the results if we do a tokenization in the MT uh, pipeline or not. So uh, if we compare the baseline in which we translate English into Egyptian, uh, we translate the test set using the English to Egyptian uh, machine translation system, and we translate the test set using the English into MSA machine translation system. Here you will see that we do better using the MSA one which is not surprising. So one will say, oh, what's wrong? Although the, the, other, the other data is Egyptian. Here it's normal because our data is not purely Egyptian. It's not a naturally occurring Egyptian text. It's a, a text generated generally, uh, like, um, automatically from MSA. So you can consider it as an MSA-like Egyptian because we apply different rules, but still we have some spaces or some words that are kept as MSA. That's why we do better using the MSA uh, corpus. Um, so. This here is a summary of, of, of our results. The best results on the Egyptian test set is when we use the core system with a two-step adaptation system. We outperform the baseline, we outperform the core system alone, and we even outperform the one-step adaptation system, as you can see here. Here is an example of what we got as output. If we want to translate Pakistan, send same voice to Arab countries, you can see that the top, the, the top sentence is the reference, the left one is the one-step adaptation system result, and the right one is the, the two-step adaptation system. And you can see that the, using the second approach, the two-step adaptation system, we could correct Beersel to Beersel, like here is a, 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 gender, a gender error, which is closer to the reference. That's, that's one of the results. Here is another example in which you want to translate UN closes old office in Liberia in preparation for a new mission. And we can here see that the two-step adaptation system is better than the other one as it corrects the clitic like here in Mektabiha. You can see that, right? 
in maktab to maktabiha and uh, it gets a better or a closer um, sp spell, like it does kind of, a, not spelling correction because Liberia and Liberia are written in the two ways are correct, but the one on the, on the right is closer to the reference. So, as a conclusion, we built an MT system to translate from English into Egyptian, in which we, want to add, we adapted the, from MSA into Egyptian Arabic. So, <coughs> our MT system it adapts not only the domain, but uh, not only the dialect, but the domains as well of MSA. And we have shown that we can leverage the uh, large amount of out-of-domain data, MSA data, to translate between English and uh, Egyptian. So, um, our best system is the two-adaptation system that Im improves all the results. And we can, we can also notice that our triparallel corpus gave us a good opportunity to create this kind of system, but we should not forget that this data is artificial and um, it is important to test this system on a more authentic, authentic uh, data, um, like uh, naturally occurring Egyptian uh, dialect. There are different resources. So during this master's work, the students didn't get the chance to try that, but we have been extending things in that direction. And uh, another future work of this is trying to adapt the system to include other dialects. And we started doing it, but we didn't do it for, for the Syrian Arabic, but we didn't get a result yet. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you. We have five minutes for questions. I just have one question. Why are you translating in Egyptian? Sorry? Why are you translating in Egyptian? Why I am translating Egyptian? To Egyptian. To Egyptian? Because we want to see what it's going to give. If you want to translate English to Egyptian, what can we get? If you want to one day, I don't know, get a video. Uh, I don't see any, any like, right application right now. Nizar, can you help? Yeah. Subtitling in Arabic, for example, yeah. Exactly, subtitling, for example. If you want to subtitle in Egyptian, how do you want to do that? No, because you understand English, by the way, and there are Egyptians who don't understand English who might be interested in having such a system. Uh, okay, I don't have any. Paco, a more kind question, please. <laughs> Go ahead. So my question comes, uh, when you do segment Arabic for evaluation, how do you do it? Segmentation? Segmentation. We, I, saw, I showed the result for the, for the tokenized and the detokenized here. And you can see that the, res the results are still the same here. <laughs> Because actually we are covering more OOVs, that's why actually we have less OOVs here, that's, we, that's why we got very good results. And actually here our core English into MSA, um, uh, into MSA system is not as good as it should be normally. Because here we are comparing our results to only one reference. Because for this corpus, as I have been discussing this with Fathi uh, earlier, and he said, why did you get these results? And I said, we are only using one reference. Because he got better results on, by using different references for, 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 for such systems. Yes, Stefan. I think, no, I don't think we did this. Uh, no, we didn't. Do you, I mean, do you expect that actually you can do better than just applying the transformation rules when you now try to stick to the system? The problem with, sorry, for, the problem for the rule-based system is that it cannot cover 
all the phenomena we have because we have seven different rules we need to apply them and we need we covered some 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 nouns pronouns whatever and not the rest that's why we need to move to the statistical one to learn from data to get a better better translation Exactly. And the rules that he wrote assume that you have uh, gold policy shares and gold tree structures already. So, so in that sense, it really makes sense to use it when you're preparing your training data, but it doesn't make sense to use it when you're okay. testing if you have not gone through the process. Okay. So we're back. Can you go to the example? The one is the reference? Yes. Be, actually, Bitterlock, this, this sentence was generated using the rule-based system, by the way. It's not, it's not purely Egyptian. Bitiful in Egyptian, right? That's, yeah, I know that's the thing. Here, actually, it came, it came from the Arabic sentence, Al-Umam Mutahida Tughliqu Maktabaha Sabiq. So we applied the B to the verb and get something which is Egyptian-like. So that, that was the thing I told you, like, it's not perfect. The, the natural Egyptian, right? Yeah. Yes. Why you used some part of the data for evaluation? We did. Do you remember, Nizar? We did this, actually, and we got results, but in the paper, to be honest, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you things honestly, in the paper, if we added this, it would have been a lot of information, and we didn't get space to even discuss it. So we did this, we added Syrian data that we got, like a, a normal, like a natural Syrian data. We did, we did uh, some experiments on them. The results are not that good for the Syrian, and for the Egyptian, we show that the Egyptian data we have been working on is artificial and it's not natural, and I can give you these results and the data as well, if you want. So we did this. Yes. Yeah, thank you. This is all very interesting. And um, my question is like this example here and the example before, can you just show us again the one from Pakistan? Um, I mean, it's still, the Egyptian Arabic still looks like modern standard Arabic because the domain is completely different. Like we use the dialects for communicative purposes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, I was wondering the text that you fed into, I mean, uh, the training data or uh, the original English text, where they, what kind of genres did you have? Was there a lot of spoken or was it a lot of it also? Uh, it, is, it is a formal data, actually. It's the NIST nice data that we try to kind of. It is newspaper data, that's, we, that's why you can see th things like that. And we tried to get some Egyptian-like data out of it, that was the thing, yeah. Right. So probably mm. you try to start with spoken English data and then try to translate that into Egyptian English data. It might, it might, yeah, but these, these are news, that's why we have such kind of examples, yeah. Mm. Now it should be that to test everything again using that. On real data, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 